Good Monday evening, everybody. Uh, getting ready with this December outturn preview tasting. I think looking even more relaxed than me. A wizard is never late. He arrives exactly when he intends to. <laughs> Daniel Whittington from Austin. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good, good. I like that story. I'm sticking with it. <laughs> That's one of my favorite lines from Gandalf. In the uh, and it's Lord delivered so seriously. It's perfect. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Quick shout out to those tuning in. A little bit of a roll call here. The Whiskey Franco was the first to comment. Stewart of Butte is here. Mamuka 1977. Ryan Mercer. Uh, Pickley Do. Sam Gallimore. I don't know if I've seen Sam and tune in. Can I say that Ryan Mercer, his middle name better be Dam? Right. Because remember that old radio show, Roy Dam? Yeah. yeah. Roy. Roy D. Roy D. Mercer. Roy D. Mercer. <laughs> think of. How big old boy are you? That's right. I'm going to come down there. <laughs> I'm going to come down there and whoop your... <laughs> uh, Adam Clary, Bourbon Boss Man. Good to see you, Bourbon. Don't know if I've seen you tune in before. before. Big Ed, Seth Landisman, T-Roy, Daniel Whittington's in here commenting, Duke McHale, Jeff, Jeff I or Jeff One, Bird Dog. Big Dog, JT, Eric Waite Whiskey Studies. Hey, he, he says, was on with you, Reese. That was a fun whiskey, one. Santa's Elves. There's only 20 shopping days until Christmas. Uh, Steve Balzac, Jason Cooper, Wh Northwoods Whiskey Nerds, Logan Mott, Brandon. Brandon checking in from Snowy, a.k.a. Alaska. Ooh, we were just giving Alaska shit on camera today. It's an episode that won't come out until like mid December or oh, late really? December, but uh, but that we drank something from Alaska and then we just trash talked Alaska the whole time because <laughs> they're they're always giving Texans shit because they're a bigger state, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but they've got less people than my neighborhood. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, uh, Raya Burr is tuning in. Says, "Hey, got the first bottle from you guys today." Oh, nice. Good. Hopefully, it's a good one. Should be. They are, they're all good. Just some are better than others. <laughs> nice. Robbie Robinson tuning in. RJO350937. Robert. Good evening. Uh, all. Whiskey the Gathering tuning in. Jason Jones. Nick Bishop. A lot of people tonight. A few names I haven't seen or heard of before. So probably from Daniel's side. What are we drinking over here, Scott? So uh, we've got a big outturn. Let me see. Um one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve bottles will be released tomorrow. I've got the graph Ooh, to show you nice. later. We've only got five of them for you here tonight. We're gonna hey, I am okay with that. Twelve yeah. is too many. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta, you know, work tomorrow. <laughs> All right, plug plug your ears. I'm gonna say the number of this one. Oh Ear, earmuffs. Daniel doesn't, doesn't work like with ear pods. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, you Easy over. That. Yeah. Uh, cask 39.225, sweet, fruity, and Dang mellow. <laughs> I do know that cask. <laughs> <laughs> Ten-year-old space I sweet, fruity, and mellow, 60.6% ABV. Our cask type on this one, a second fill X bourbon barrel. These will be available as usual tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. Unless you've attended one of the outturn tastings in person for December, they actually took nine different whiskeys of the 12 to the outturn to the uh, in, li in live person tastings. And then you also, when you attend those tastings, you can order bottles early and you get a 10% discount on the bottles when you go to the in person tastings. So everybody else has to wait till tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> So this, I mean, I know what distillery this is. I'm pretty sure because I'll there are a couple of 30 odd ones that that I like. I prefer they're distilleries I actually prefer, so I tend to look for them. And if the smell is what I think it is, then I'm pretty sure I know exactly what it is. Oh yeah, this wait, is this is a little bit different. No, no. So it has that same kind of super fruity, but mm -hmm. grain musty space side classic, right? Yeah. But no, I was the proof hadn't settled down yet. 
I was getting a little bit of a punchy note. Yeah, 60.6%. And our color on this one didn't show it. Pretty, you know, fairly pale, about what you'd expect for a, from a second fill barrel. Maybe even, even looks like just a refill barrel. There's not much cask influence here at all on this one. On the nose, I honestly, I just get light, light fruitiness, malty, vanillas, little floral, maybe some rose petals. There's almost a, like a lemon note, like a citrus note. Mm-hmm. But it has this kind of tanginess to the nose that makes me think. Yeah. And, you know, this dis distillery too, I believe only one core range bottling. Mm -hmm. the, uh, 15 year. Is that right? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of independent bottlings and stuff with this one used in blends. Oh, mm. that, that just goes for days. Mm. That's still unrolling. Like if you don't like Speyside, this is not going to be your whiskey because this is mm. just right down the middle. Sweet, fruity, mellow, great, perfect profile for this one. A lot of fruits, a fruit basket. There's some, there's some darker fruits, you know, berries, things like that. Some stone fruits, a little bit of citrus, kind of the whole gamut. Maltiness, vanillas, a little bit of cinnamon. Ooh. Man, you're finding all kinds of things that I'm not finding. <laughs> <laughs> you're moving so fast. Have you tried I, these before we shot? Yeah, I've already shot my reviews of these. Yeah. Oh, you cheater pumpkin eater. No wonder <laughs> you have the recall so fast. <laughs> <laughs> See, did you have a, were you, were you warming up your palate though? Did you have a little palate warmer upper? No, I, we shot videos earlier today at about three o'clock this afternoon. And so that was, you know, what, four hours ago. So I've, I've been just, that was my wake, wake up my taste buds. Yeah, but there was some bad whiskey in that review earlier, so I'm, I needed to just like get it out of my head. So not our, not our, so much nice. not our, not to confuse. No, me. no, it was definitely not yours. <laughs> this is fun. There's so much. I, so you said stone fruit, and I could see what you mean by that. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting. You said cinnamon. I don't know that I'm getting that kind of a light spice. Maybe Eric's right. Eric says I need a bigger glass. But this is pretty, this is pretty big. This is as big as my hands can hold, Eric. My wee hands. Ooh, yeah. Slight caramels, nice vanillas. It's kind of like a, a caramel vanilla fudge. Now I'm starting to get in the palate some of those like earthy herbal, like heather and. Uh -huh. You know, like a like in the family of like a rosemary direction or something wow. like that, but but not as heavy. And I always get that from this one distillery. This sort of like I call it malty and earthy, but it's um it's not peat or anything. It's just this grain forward earth, overturned earth kind of feeling that's almost peppery but never quite makes it. Yeah. Almost sage, I would say. Yes, thank you. That's way better. Yeah. Sage is way more accurate. Yes. Which I, I wasn't picking up until you just started running through the herbs there. And then I was like. Yeah. yeah no. Sage. sage is way better. Um, They don't say much on the. On the notes for this. This is a whiskey for. Uh, this is what it's okay. This is what, what would you drink this whiskey while doing Scott? Oh, um, well, I drink whiskey anytime, but let me see this one. This is early evening. Okay. Um, may probably pre dinner would be. Okay. For me, this is, uh, <laughs> this is, uh, hand sewing doilies with grandmother <laughs> during an afternoon tea. <laughs> I don't have any experience there, so I'll have no, to. No, you just gotta, you just gotta make up the most absurd scenario you can come up with. Hmm. And and she wore too much perfume, yeah. and it's sort of like floating across hmm. the table. Yeah, well, there's a little perfume now that you mentioned. Yeah, that. A little but she brought aromatic. the good shortbread, so. <laughs> oh it's, yeah, it's gonna be okay. 
Well, I was trying to think before I went down into the shark cage uh, on the boat. This would be a- <laughs> now, you need something a little more hefty if you're going down into a shark cage. <laughs> Good Lord, you don't want a delicate whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> There's no pinky out for a shark cage. That's true. You have well, no, you have a peat when you come out of the water. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I survived. <laughs> fire. I have made fire. <laughs> mm. Mm. That's really good though. That's a, a the story that starts with a C, right? You can't really answer that question, can no. you? No. L. L. Well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So much more. Because I was thinking it was, um, never mind, I won't say it out loud, but it's the wood. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that I, one you cannot get. The C. Except in independent bottle. Or I don't have any of it right. except in independent bottle links. Yep. Yep. The C word is coming up. Uh, yeah, but I don't think. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Tonight. Yeah. So Sweet. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's too good. I one. wonder what made me think of that one because uh, usually sure. that C-word one is a little bit more peppery and zesty. But I feel like there's an overlap. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think there is between the two as well, especially okay. in some of our a lot of our casts. They can mm-hmm. be pretty pretty similar. Okay. Yeah. I got to drop the water on here to see if it makes any difference or not. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. I'm just letting that sit because it's still going. Great legs on this one, too. I mean, they're running down my glass. I forgot water. What am Uh, I thinking? Need to grab some? Yeah, I'll be right back. All right. Talk about yourselves. A little bit of water on this one. Still maybe bringing out a little bit more of that, that herbal herbaceousness. That Daniel was noticing a little bit more earthy. Um, all the sweetness is still there. All those different fruits. Very nice. Add some honeys. Hunt, not honeydews. Honeys. Um, you, add, you add honey don'ts. Yeah, honey do's and honey don'ts. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm going to add a little bit to that one. That was a good idea. You want to see a disproportionate water combo that I could find on short notice. <laughs> hey, you can point, just don't laugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this problem. <laughs> Oh, hey, that is way better with water. It's It brought the earth to the surface and that mustiness. Uh, yeah, that's what I noticed too. Yeah, it, now it feels like you're having that little sewing session in the basement in the underground cellar. <laughs> I catch a lot of slack because I, I say with a lot of our whiskeys that walk, they get a little bit better. I think nine out of ten of our whiskeys are so high ABV that water really helps them. Yeah. yeah, some people are like, "Yeah, you say that with everything," but I'm like, it really does help. So it's glad Man, I got to tell you, I'll say it. I mostly drink lower proof if I can do it these days because I'm just uh, all the time at the distillery. I'm tasting barrel samples, and mm-hmm. when we blend, if we're doing barrel releases, it's high yeah. proof. And a lot of things people send us are high proof because they're whiskey nerds. And and by the time I get home, I just want like a Jameson or a like a Glenmorangie or something like so, yeah. whatever is. I, I literally will walk to my cupboard. And check proofs until I find a, an 80 and be like, I love that one. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, though, too, you can tell, you know, as we're drinking those, I, I do the same thing sometimes. And, but, you know, it's like when you're used to drinking a dram of something that's 62% mm-hmm. ABV, but then you go pour something that's 40% ABV and it doesn't hit you, you know, that it doesn't kick into your blood. You don't get that blood alcohol content rolling like it does off that high ABV. You can tell, you know, right. too, you're like, well, I just drank, you know, one or two. You know, yeah. and don't feel a thing. <laughs> yeah, which is nice. I mean, yeah. I always wish I could slow roll alcohol impact. I wish like that would be like everyone's like, if you had a genie and you had to pick some wishes, one of mine would be that I had full control over alcohol impact. <laughs> <laughs> like I could decide I could drink whatever I wanted and I could decide to what degree it affected me. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. All right, what this? That's super that? powerful. Oh, you're reading the uh, water doesn't. Oh, let's do a. Uh, I like that. Let me read the the tasting notes on this one. Thirty nine point two two five. Easy over. Read it in your best accent. You've been hanging out with these guys long enough. You got to do a Scottish accent. I don't do accents well. <laughs> I can do a Kansas accent. You want me to do like a redneck? Wait, do Kansas people have accents? Uh, according to outsiders, yes. It's not just like almost Southern? Re it can be. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll, I don't know if I can do this, if I can try a redneck or not. <laughs> An unusually sweet and juicy profile for a refill cask. This is supremely lovely, easy, and enchanting take on this classic Speyside make. I don't know if that was redneck. That was some that's, sort of accent. That's something. I'll give you my heaviest Texan one on the next one. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll show these Scots how to do an accent for real. <laughs> what are we? What are we shifting to over here? Oh, or, yeah. Uh, we're going to go to the next purple label, another sweet, fruity, and mellow. Polished and refined. Or polished and refined. Yep. Oh, wait, wait. What did you, is that what you grabbed? Yeah. Polished, okay. polished and refined. Okay. I thought you said polished. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> polished and refined. <laughs> A little bit of the accent came through on the title. Some sort of accent. So uh, let me show you the banner on this one. Did you ca catch the cask number? I'm trying not to look this okay, time, don't look. but I now I see it. it, yeah. I won't say it out loud. Yeah. <laughs> this is the C word. Uh, polished and refined, 10-year-old Highland, sweet, fruity, and mellow, 59.2% ABV. Cast type on this one, first fill, X bourbon barrel. Uh, a mellow 59%. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> Color a little bit darker than our last one, 10 year and a second fill. This is the first fill, so picked up a little bit more of that cask influence. About what you'd expect on a 10, I think. I feel a lot better about my mistaken comparison on that first one because oh. A being these two. Yeah. There is a big old Venn diagram overlap on those. Yeah. Both both great distilleries. We get some excellent casks from each yeah. one. Uh, but both kind of both kind of similar as well, you know. So we get some uh, similarities with them. But this has dark. This is darker though. It's like if you took the same crown and you pushed really hard instead of just did a light touch. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely richer on the nose. More coming off of it. More more depth on the nose. <sighs> Trying to just decipher the the sweetness, the fruits here. Caramels for sure. Yeah, I'm still stuck on the the mustiness is dominating on this one for me. It got all the. I mean, don't. I'm blowing past all the classic sweet notes that are like really presenting first because they're like right there up front. Yeah, but there's all these other things curling and threading through that are really nice. By the I'm way, if you, were, if you were gonna guess or just you know say the distillery name out loud, you're the guest. You can complete. That's true. I can do that. Yeah, I think this it's, is Kleinlish. It's just I can't. So yeah, I can't that's confirm, what I think this is. I can't confirm nor deny. Yeah, yeah. Wink, wink. Nod, nod. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There's a little bit more. Almost more that the mustiness that you just said on the nose. Yeah, that's what started with me. I have a little bit of a cold, and I feel like I'm, I'm. I mean, I'm not stopped. Like I can breathe time through my nose. But I feel like it's sort of, it's making it harder for me to get past that first layer of ethanol and get through to things. Right, right. I'm, because the water changed a lot for me on that first one. But I really like this. It's softer. It feels like it's got a slightly sanded edges compared mm -hmm. to the previous one. It's still bright and fruity, but it's not as brittle. Yeah. yeah. Um. I forget what I was just going to say. Oh, same same with the other one, though. Not necessarily citrus fruits here. Mm -hmm. Darker fruits, probably still in that stone fruit, if not kind of like boiled stone fruits. Almost like you come in, oh. grandma's, grandma's baking that pie. I took a sip already, but good Lord, that's so much better than the first one in the sense of like down in my profile where I prefer things to get a little bit more earthy and, and uh, savory to the sweetness. Mm -hmm. Mm. This has a really good balance of the savory notes mm. of the malt. Mm. 
and not just the vanillins and peaches. Stone fruits on the nose, peaches to me, peach mm. color. Oh yeah. All over this one. Almost like okay. one of those fruit cups with that dead syrup oh. in them. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Like the fruit cocktail, that heavy syrup. Wow. Yeah, this distillery, uh, there are two. Um, this one and also starts with a C that I think are sleeper distilleries where it's like most people don't know about them, but son of a bitch, if they don't consistently I go back to them and fall in love again, and it is Cragenmore. Mm. Mm -hmm. And this oh, one, yeah. which I think is Glenlish, but... Um, could be, um, but only, but that's why I know I can't do that with all of them, but like there are a few that if I go to a bar and they don't have a massive selection, but they have a good selection and I see either of those two, I'll probably grab it uh, because otherwise I'm going to end with Laphroaig or they have some of the mm -hmm. obvious like of one sixteen or something like that. Yeah. But um, I love the musty and the earthy, mm -hmm. but all the sweetness and the, mm -hmm. yep. yeah, I'm going to add a little water to mine. And liter literally some, in my review, I even called out beeswax on this one. Oh, yeah. Almost totally. like a coconut. To me, it's like a, uh, but then a coconut wax as well, or a coconut type lotion, maybe even. Not that I know what coconut lotion smells mm. like. I've heard. I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <You> don't <laughs> coconut lotion. No, I just, actually, you have. You just didn't mean to. That's called, um, the sun, it's called the uh, sun, what's that sun, banana boat sunscreen. That is all coconut all day long, man. If you've ever put on banana boat. Mm, mm -hmm. Oh, then water added to this just really blows it up. Mm. Still a lot of, just a lot of stone fruits, but to me, peaches, maybe a little bit of apricot, some pears up front stewed yeah some slight spiciness just some cinnamons and when is the last there. time you stewed fruits never me either would <laughs> the fruit that's in a pie be considered stewed fruit uh only if you boil it down i think well, because you're cooking it up right so you're condensing the fruit in like if an you, apple pie well, yeah so when you bring it out of the oven that's condensed yeah. So I've got because I think when people say because I don't I've never stewed fruit, but like when I hear stewed fruit, I think pie filling. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. I wonder if that's accurate. I wonder if there's anybody in the comments who actually cooks <laughs> and knows what stewed yeah. for is that baking or cooking stewed fruits? I would say baking. Okay. Well, if you're putting it in a pie, it's baking. If you're yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're going to throw a uh, pork butt in it and then smoke it, yeah. it'd be cooking. Uh, oh, Eric says that preserves are stewed fruit. Mm. So that would mean that like when you cook down the fruit mm. and add sugar and everything to condense it and then you can it, Eric. So this is like when you're prepping fruit for being canned or jarred or whatever. That would make sense to me. Because now if you say jam my brain goes in all the right directions and preserves. Yeah. Right? And I'm, yeah. And I'm actually thinking on that, you know, peach or even, ap even more like apricot preserves here. Even yeah. Here. I feel the apricot in direction more than the peach now that well, I added water, but yeah, I added yeah. water. Yeah. And I've got a drop of water on mine too. Yeah. Definitely a little bit of a shift because it was peaches. And now like once you start talking preserves and I was thinking mm. about it's like more apricot. And we got some fruit stewers and fruit and jam makers. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> you guys need to start sewing me some doilies. I'll sew the doilies mm. for your guys' afternoon tea because I have a sewing machine over here. Mm. Very slight tobacco on this one. Maybe some of that, some of that uh, mustiness. Really? What kind of tobacco? It's um, it's lighter, probably dry. Uh, cigar leaf, cigar, cigar tobacco, I would say. Very faint, light on the tail end, uh, on the finish. You are firing on all cylinders today, man. I am tr struggling to keep up, I feel like. <laughs> it's nice, though. I really love this one. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, what's yeah. our next little beast of burden? Right. Let me read. Let me oh, read. Oh wait, wait. Notes. I gotta read it. I gotta oh, you're gonna read the notes. Yeah, you're gonna do it your best Texas accent. Yeah, yeah, this is one of 232 polished and refined herbs and toasted cereals join clotted cream on sandalwood, while beeswax and manuka honey fused with citrus oil, cinnamon, and pineapple. Very nice. Fifty nine point two percent. You nailed that one right there on the head, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> right there's 10 years old, ain't a day older. <laughs> ain't a day younger. <laughs> I think people will tune in just for our accents. Yeah, oh yeah. Right. yeah we've, been, we've been practicing. You see that color? Giddy up. Oh, what am I grabbing? Yeah, maybe, the yeah, copper maybe. one? Deep, rich, and dried fruits. Rather scrumptious. Dude, you have the colors down. Of course you do, because you're working oh, yeah. with them now. But I yeah. can never keep the colors straight. Yep. Uh, Emma has all the colors nailed. She's got it. Does she? Good. Not Well, the one she likes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know very many people uh, who have uh, access to a lot of S&W Um Let's see. So those watching now or later that don't know Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, we have 12 flavor profiles. Uh, just like the ones before were this kind of medium shade of purple. They were sweet, fruity, and mellow. We actually, have, we've got 12 different profiles. There's three different shades of purple, three different shades of blue, three different shades of green. We've got an old and dignified, uh, dry, spicy and dry, and oily and, well, no, oily and coastal is a blue. Six, uh, is that it? 12? Yeah. Right in there. But I have uh, good. News. I call it burnt orange or, or copperish. Yeah, I find copper is what it looked like in, my, in the lighting in my house. Yeah. Uh, good news, I have absolutely no idea what cast number sixty eight is, as far as like knowing them from memory. So I'm flying um, blind on. Ooh, man. I, started, I knew it. Now I got to think. Look at that color. Oh yeah. And so that this is one is uh, ten years ex bourbon hogshead and two years in that first fill Oloroso Barrique. Oh man, this is so up my alley. This is right what I so recently I find that I've been shying away from peat as my, I mean I'm still drinking Lafroig and things, but I've been shying away from peat and I've been headed towards a lot more wine cask and sherry cask finishes. I've been falling in love with a lot of but only like the hefty ones, not the super pretty, you know, delicate ones. Like the ones where the sherry is like yeah, yeah. Got punch to it, and this is perfect. Yeah, it's almost got ginger, like a ginger snap. There, you know, there there is a time for both, and I think I've come to appreciate that. But I do, I mean, I I fell in love with the, the heavy sherries, you know, the heavy bombs and stuff. But now, after so much whiskey experience and tasting so many, a lot of times when you go back to like a blend or some of these like a double casking where there's just like a slight sherry maturation that comes through, if it's done really yeah. well. You're like, oh, that's that's really done pretty good. I like that one. I sent well, you a message. One. I sent you a message on the distillery. On oh, did you? Okay, 68. hang on. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, they nailed it in the comments too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, don't put it in the comments yet, guys, because I'm still trying to figure some of these things out. Oh, they jumped the gun on that. I was trying to avoid reading the comments until I knew yeah. what I was hoping to figure it out. But yeah. <laughs> This, All three of these, though, tonight, 39, Distillery 39, 26, 68, we get some oh. excellent casks from, uh, as Stephen Rogers is pointing out, he says, All the Sherry 68s I've had have been bangers. Yeah, this is so balanced, and it's deep, but it's not yeah. dominating. Yeah. And it this has one, the same mustiness that the last one had, but in all the darker tones instead of the lighter tones. This one you'll find to me. To me, I'm going to find spice, oak, and nuttiness on the nose. Oh, any nuttiness. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Almost like toasted almonds. Yeah. So that means to me oloroso, because every time I get toasted yeah. or candied almonds, my brain goes oloroso. Right. Dark dark chocolate to me on the nose. And I can say that kind of thing because unlike Eric Waite, I know a lot about wine. Yeah. So Eric. he's really new to wine. He's just sort of exploring and trying to understand yeah. it. and Dipping his toe. 
Yeah, like his Boone's Farm collection is just amazing. <laughs> He's got all the flavors. <laughs> Dating back to 82. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Eric. <laughs> yeah, we have to say that on these, because uh, there's probably people watching who don't realize we're, we all know each other. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try this. Cheers, yes, sir. Oh, yeah, cheers. You bet. No, on the nose, though, like I say, it's really classic Oloroso notes, not, mm -hmm. not too sweet. So, and with the thing is with Oloroso, though, that's generally oh. what you're going to get, yeah, is the, the nuttiness, the spiciness, and the oaks, the toasted notes, compared to like a PX, where you're going to get more of the sweetness, uh, you know, things like that coming out. But Holy cow, man. That is good. That is all of the toasted almonds and ginger snaps. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this is a holiday whiskey if I've had one so far. This is mm. right. This is beautiful. I'm almost getting like the Christmas tree we could, we set up yesterday. That like sappy evergreen mm. kind of, yeah. you know? Yeah. What I don't get though, I was kind of alluding to on the nose even is the sweetness. This is definitely just, it's nuttiness. And I even go a little bit darker than um, almonds, more mm. like, to me, walnut, like crushed walnuts, maybe, or even pecans. Mm, a little uh, more waxy. Yeah. Spicy, though, all the cinnamons, the nutmegs, ra uh, mm. plums, raisins. I almost hate to add water, but because this one is really delivering uh, on the, the way it's proofed right now. But I'm going to. Mm. Yeah, great mouthfeel on this one. And kind of what we touched on as well. Not a sherry bomb here, but great Oloroso notes coming through. Not overpowering at all. Still, a yeah, it's not like a Glen Cadam or I mean, sorry, not Glen Cadam. Glendronic. Uh, Glendronic. Yeah, where it's just like you might as well be drinking sherry with a hint of whiskey. <laughs> but which I love. I love yeah, it. yeah. But <laughs> but this is a little more balanced. It really adds. Yeah, it has both that bourbon. Is still holding the weight of that the oak you, forward. Yeah, you still get kind of some of those um, honeyed, toasted honey notes underneath it. Kind of the, some of the lighter sweetness notes, but then with that Oloroso though, it's just it's kind of dry, almost a little astringent. Nuttiness, spices, and oak. I get the dark fruits, and I actually I call it out. I'm like it's like somebody made jam but forgot hmm. to add the sugar. Huh. Interesting. You know? Yeah. The density of it. So yep. this one is a whiskey that you drink while attempting to bake your first ever fruitcake while camping. Hmm. You only have access to the tools that you get while camping. Interesting. And you're trying to make, and you ran out of all the real ingredients you needed, but you still had a bottle of sherry left over. So you're like, let's just add sherry into this thing. Maybe it'll fix it. <laughs> I was going to say, it feels like you're trying to make that cake while you're doing the bull run in Spain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the, the earthiness, the dust is kicking Yeah, up. yeah. The bull's right on you. Well, I guess it you depends know? on where you're camping. <laughs> True. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah, that is the good stuff right there. Oh, the water made it really zesty and peppery. Yeah. Almost almost too much. Ooh, uh, no. I'm going to come back to that more. because that got punchy with a little more. Water. Yeah, it's it's spicier, more oak showing. Uh, a lot of times I'll see, you know, water bring out the sweetness. Still no oh, sweetness this, here. Dude, the tannins. Uh, yeah. When you add water to this, the tannins take over. Yeah, it's oak. That is so dry. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm going to add a little more water because I feel like I just ruined it. No, I think that's got to be, I think that's the Oloroso. You know, when you look at some Olorosos, they're drier. Uh, nutty, you know, yeah. Spiky. That just sucked the all the moisture off. Dark fruit. Yep. <laughs> 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 and well, and you know, when you say that though, so generally that only happens, you know, with some of those older whiskeys. And yeah. so this one actually does feel, it's 12 years old. Feels older. Yeah, that water, it probably makes it feel like it's, 15 to 18 years old. Like there's a lot more of that oh, that's better. sitting in there. Adding a little more water brought it back around. Mm. Mm. 
you know, I'm starting to get some sweet now. Yeah. Two, drop, two drops of water. Starting to bring out now. Still not uh, real prevalent, prevalent up, up yeah. front, but some of those a uh, little bit of a raspberry almost now. Yeah, I could see that because of the the tanginess of a raspberry, like the not sour, but crawling towards it. Yeah. Yeah. And yes, Eric, all whiskey always needs a cigar. And I would be doing that right now. But like, I, I, if you guys have ever hung out with me when I've been on any other live stream, what am I always doing? Always smoking a cigar. Always. Because that's my like, when someone says, why don't you come and hang out with us and drink whiskey? I always sit up on the back deck and I light a cigar and I drink whiskey. But the exception to that is when I hang out with Scott, I want to be on my game. <laughs> <laughs> and a cigar just like blunts all of my tasting. And so I'm like, no, I got to stay on top of things. I can't get yeah. all hazy with a cigar. And you were telling me, though, you've got that lined up for after the stream. Oh, yeah. Well, we're done. To, uh, I'm going to have to grab one to the as back well. deck for a cigar. Yeah, I might even have to go sit outside on my porch and smoke a cigar, too. It's nice and cool here. Yeah, so. I think we hit, uh, we're hitting a, a balmy 63 right now, which is kind of nice. Ooh, 45 here. Ooh, no. Yeah, I would. <laughs> oh, it's coat. Uh, yeah, you got to wear a coat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's look at tasting notes oh, on this one. What accent are you going to use this time? Oh, uh, let me just, I'll improvise. It. How about Miss Doubtfire? I hate to label it. Oh, hello, hello children. children. Marzipan. <laughs> Marmalade, marzipan, and prunes complemented oily nuts, while spice from cloves, star anise, and ginger joined fresh hops and lapsang Sushan tea. I could see uh, they lost me on the star anise. I, I hate licorice, and I'm usually really sensitive to it. Oh. Uh, I don't know that I got licorice on that one. Yeah. I, I can see what they mean by the oiliness of hops. Oh, definitely. Oily nuts. Yeah. Spices from yeah, cloves. Uh, I don't know what lapsang, what lapsang Sushan tea is, but I could I would go a little black tea or a little even chai tea. Black tea yeah, with some milk and some honey in it. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm looking for color of this. Oh, they're the same color. That doesn't help. Uh, one's a little bit darker than the other. Go with the 11-year-old. Okay. I see 11 over here. And it's called... Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. What movie is that from? Do you know? <laughs> Death of the T-100. T-1000. Well done. T-1000. T-1000. Yeah. What? Uh, which... That's... What was that? That wasn't the first one. That was the second one, right? T-2. Arnold is a T-101. Cyberdyne Systems model. That's right. Because the 1000 is the one that, like, shape changes and... Yeah, the, the one the shit, one thousand right? was a liquid metal alloy. Yeah, that was freaky. <laughs> I remember by, that one. By the like, way, that was what year do you think that was? Oh man, I don't know, but it's, in, it's young enough for me that it's ingrained in my scary movie memories as a child. Oh, really? Because I remember that scene oh, yeah. with the guy trying to drink milk, and oh, then uh -huh. all of a sudden, the guy's arm shook. Yeah. Straight through the milk jug. Yep. So I would guess that I was probably 12, 11. So I'm going to guess 90 or 89. 90, 91, 1991, T2 ah. came out. Yep. Oh, it's so close. Yep. Okay. Now I could, I, I saw, I saw a Terminator in the movie theaters. I can remember that. So that was a great That's movie cool. at the time. Yeah. Uh, pro and Terminator 2 is probably one of the best sequels. You know, you generally sequels have a hard time living up to the original. But Terminator 2 was, I think, almost better. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. I. I. I don't know if like, I can declare that. But when we watch it with the boys, but uh, with the kids, like they like the second one better than the first one. Yeah. So there's a nostalgic attachment to the first one because it was new. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, and then well, then I mean, uh, you know, I think 1986 on T1. It, I mean, it yeah. was limited by you know what they could do with special effects at the time. A little bit better in 1991, although still not quite what they do today. But yeah, so cask 53. Yeah, yeah. I think you cheated me because this is water. <laughs> <laughs> this is the color of slightly dirty water. Look at our cask type on this one. Refill X bourbon hogshead. So this is really? 
at least a third time. This uh, hog's head has been used very little cask influence here. Wow. In and, 11 years. And look at that. Yep. Yep. And Nothing. by the way, this is uh, this is heavily peated as well. In our, We've got three peated categories. Oh, right. I know who this one is. Peated. Smell. And highly peated. Yeah. So this color is highly peated? Is that what it is? Yep. Yep. Okay. He heavily, heavily peated. But this okay, one. so for the distillery that I'm pretty sure I know what this one is, it's got way more honey than I would have thought. It's, but I mean, like there's a sweetness layer to it. That, yeah. There's a lot of peat, but there's a lot of uh, vanilla, honeyed citrus sweetness on the nose to me, and roasted peanuts and seaweed, sea, seashore, maritime, salt. Yeah, meat. say that for we drink seashells down by the seashore. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh man, that smells great. This smells like the base to most Johnny Walker blends. Oh. <laughs> the peated versions. Well, yeah, they have a little the of this. Little, Not little the base. Palace, the yeah, smoke, a little Talisker. Right? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. But I, I, I tell you, I mean, Distillery 53, we just we get some great casks from 10, 11 years old. Mm. Um, they don't disappoint at all. But this one so definitely. So, you guys are getting casks. Do you know the process? Do you just like give them a call and be like, hey, we want to use casks from you guys again? Or do you get to go down there and try things? Or is it more like we're going to contract to get 10 barrels from you and they choose? Well, see, I generally, I call them up and I'm like, hey, this is Scott. <laughs> <I know. laughs> what? No, I don't. I, I wish I could comment or no on that end. I, I don't know. Uh-uh. No. My dream, I was talking about this earlier today with Jenna. My dream in my head is that SMWS has like their own key to all of the warehouses. Yeah. That's that's Ooh. just theirs, you yeah. know? And yeah. they can like come and go secretly whenever they please. They just show up and let themselves yeah. in with their SMWS shaped key <laughs> and they roam through and try things. And then later when and then and then distiller the employees are like, oh, anything, can we get you anything? Would you like a glass of water? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, the red carpet only went out 14 feet, so it doesn't reach the barrel that you were sampling, but yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, I want that one, and I want that one, and I want that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. Write them down. That's Take what I feel it. like it should be happening. Yeah. I want that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you'll like it. I want that one. <laughs> oh bloody hell <laughs> oh no that's right oh this is good yeah all right uh, other than there is a brininess to it but it's not overwhelmingly sharp mm. oh mm. that's that is i'm starting to second guess which distillery this is for me because it's so dense. I'm not used to that density in the bottles I have from this distillery. Let me know when you want a clue. I, okay, well, so I'm going to say out loud, I think it was Kalila oh. from the nose. Uh -huh. But then I tried it, and it's so dense and syrupy that that's throwing me a little. And it's, and it's making me wonder if I'm wrong. Uh, because that density and syrupy, I tend I tend to get from the mildly peated Brooklades. Ah, uh, oh, right, good call. But um, the nose is too much down the home plate of Kalila for me. Yeah, except that dense sweetness. Stick with you. Stick with your initial impression. Stick with my gut. Okay. <laughs> but man, you see what I mean? Like I could mm -hmm. easily argue Just, that I was on a barrel tasting in, at Brooklady mm. and I was getting barrel samples from some lighter mm. wine casks or something. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's, this is, this is a very nice balance of, of a lot of peat, vanillas, citruses. I'll call out like grilled white fish. Like you're sitting on the beach on your campfire oh. with some grilled white fish and some, maybe some sliced, lemons and limes and oranges on it there's a uh, smoke rolling in from the uh from the boardwalk up there where the peat where they're roasting peanuts 
Yeah, I definitely get like there is a smell to a um, shit. What is the name of the wood that washes up on the beach? There's a name for that. It's not drift. Is it driftwood? Driftwood. Right? Yeah. Yeah. There yeah. is a smell to a beach driftwood campfire. Uh, and if you've ever had a campfire on the beach, I lived in California for eight years on the beach. Mm-hmm. I'm not literally on the beach, but like beachside town and a lot of firewood on the saltwater beach. And that combination of saltwater in the air mixed with a campfire mm-hmm. from essentially salt soaked wood is definitely one of my markers for Kulila specifically. And I don't get that the same way in Lafroig or Lagavul in the way that I do in Kulila. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, actually there was uh, if I don't know if you ever had it, the 2017 edition mm. of the 12 year Lagavulin, the, um, the distillers edition distillers edition yeah, they do. 2017 i don't know here there was it's a it's a cast strength log of and they release every year and it was just it was really a nice uh release there was a really a lot of vanillas more rich vanillas and citrus yeah. in there with it than there had been and i really get that with this one here there's great peat great no. citrus nice vanillas everything's kind of smoked a little bit of uh you know some grilled um, citrus notes and that grilled white fish, seaside, yeah. mossy, driftwood, peanuts. Yeah, that's along the same lines as what I was thinking. Throw a drop of water on it. Wow. Mm-hmm. Little minty. I'm a little, I'm a little risky to throw the water in, but I'm going to do it. No, you got more. You got more of it. That's true. <laughs> now your your guest that's hanging around or is there uh, for the for the cigar smoking efforts is he uh what, what's his favorite genre uh, I guess, of he's de- he's almost right in line with mine which is uh which is prefers pete but really has a soft spot for nuanced space sides mm. oh. right? right so um like our favorite go tos are the la- or like the un- for unpeated is like the Lottie or mm-hmm. like a like a good Oban, like the heftier and that's not un- totally unpeated, but you know what I mean, not to punch you in the face, Lafroigs. Right. Um, and then he is the one who turned me on to Longmorn Sixteen. Oh. Ah. Yeah. So if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't know about that. Huh. Nice. Um. Yeah. Which I still have two bottles left. Uh, oh. Somebody was kind enough to track down a dozen of the original Longmorn 16s in the green bottle. Wow. Uh-huh. And they were like, hey, do you want them? And I bought all of them. So <laughs> I'm down to 12, two out of the 12. But I don't hoard, but, I share. So I'm always pouring it for people. Yeah. That really is the best part, man. When you have a good whiskey and you share it with people that appreciate it. I mean, to me, that, you know, that trumps saving it. Oh, know? yeah. Even, no, even if my, you drink it all. Hey, being able to share it with people. I would really love to get this collection behind me down to like a half dozen bottles. Um, of not the as so the S and W S you can see is wait, I need to go this way. Uh, see that right there? The oh, there you go. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. It's around like sixty or so. Um, but it's not uh and I went through them. Or we went through them and we marked them, which I've told you. I mark high Olympic oh, right. on my SMWS. And I was only able to get rid of four. <laughs> four that I wasn't like, no, I want to keep this. Mm-hmm. But the rest of the bottles I have, I would love. I've, I've thought about recently, like, I need to invite a big group of people over. And the goal is just going to be, like, let's get rid of as many bottles as we can at Daniel's house. Because like, they're not the fan. Like, these are gifts and things that have been brought that the vault has. And so I don't need to hold on to it, but I would, I think that's the best memories you make is doing this yeah. or hanging out and, and, uh, or pouring for somebody who's never had it before, or, you know what I mean? Just yep. exploration and adventure. Yep. I think that's the coolest shit. Absolutely. Yep. 
Yeah. Let's look at tasty notes on the death. Oh, I'll, of the, the I'll do mine. This is Doubtfire since you. Okay, there you go. Ready? Yep. Hello, children. Today we are reading the death of the T one hundred. Liquid rock music and perishing terminators abound. A <laughs> ragged, raging industrial taste sensation. Let the heat flow through you. <laughs> Such a wonderful impersonation. <laughs> now, I have a little palate cleanser here before we go on to this, our fifth and final bottle of the night, going from a, and I debated the order on this one, going from an 11-year-old heavily peated. We're going to a 23-year-old peated. What's your palate cleanser? My homemade bread. sourdough bread. Oh, homemade. Oh, yeah. Now you're one up and. <laughs> Um, mm. do you make your own sourdough bread? I do. Yep. I started just this year. That's yep. amazing. Well, that's a COVID. Is that a COVID thing? <laughs> no, uh -uh. you just wanted oh. to. Mm -hmm. All right. I kind of always had an sourdough. I'd always kind of wanted to, or kind of thought about it. And then I saw a couple of TV shows I was watching on it and I was like, all right, I'm going to try it. I'm like, it's, it's flour and water. If you mess it up, who cares? Well, yeah, that's but, true. It took me about 10 loaves to get to where I was making something pretty good. But yeah, they're coming out real good now. Uh, speaking of, my guest is here. I'm still finishing whiskey. I know, it's a shocker. Last one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll give you a straw. Look, you know, I'm not giving you a straw. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so this one. Oh, Lord. Eric, you can't just because you live in California doesn't mean you get to claim like uh, San Francisco <laughs> rights of passage. I can't. I'm gonna. I get to correct Eric though, because true sourdough <laughs> doesn't use yeast, Eric. Oh, <laughs> I think he meant starter. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> or or uh, San Francisco. Um, no, I would power. say that the way that New Yorkers argue that you can't make mm -hmm. good pizza dough without right. New York municipal water. Yeah. That San Francisco people are like, you can't make good sourdough no, without, without San Francisco municipal water in the water. starter. Yeah. 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 I've heard, I've heard They're stories very serious about, about it. San Francisco tap water. Yeah. You know, the only, uh, we all know the best thing to ever come out of San Francisco is rice and roni. <laughs> <laughs> because it's known as the San Francisco treat. San Francisco treat. And that's just science. Uh, a smoky, sweet, and savory sensation. I think you're going to want to try this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the whiskey about me. Uh, yeah, well done. Eric, yeah, the whiskey Franco says, dang. <laughs> Gregor, <laughs> time for a dram, says, burn. <laughs> ah, burn. <laughs> ah, we're just giving Eric crap. <laughs> Eric made me a delicious meal the other day, and uh, after a really amazing drive down the coast, and oh, really? uh, yeah, but he didn't make me any sourdough bread. So, ah, we're are we even friends? <laughs> <laughs> so, color. Look at this. Uh, twenty. Oh my gosh. Uh, this 60, smells incredible. 66.208, a smoky, sweet, and savory sensation. 23-year-old yes. Highland, peated, 47.8%. We did see a little bit of drop on the ABV on this one. Okay. Uh, must be leaky cask. I mean, who knows? But ex-bourbon hogshead and then transferred to a first fill ex-Oloroso barrique. And it's a peated uh, Highland. Yep. So that really narrows it down. The, yeah. Uh, distill a Highland distillery that's known for generally smoking for peating, making peat. Oh, meat. that narrows it down even more. So yeah. it's not an outlier in their mm -hmm. lineup. No, uh, -uh no. Okay, so there's it, only like starts with a, only no. like two that I can think of that are like that. Do you want a clue yet, or you, you want to wait? I, for well, I mean alphabetically then i'm gonna start with ardmore <laughs> but, <laughs> but oh hmm. stick with your initial uh, impression but i'm not smelling ardmore this is way more cake and bready there's and a lot fruity. of that 
There's a lot of that Oloroso on the nose. Yeah. Most of my memories of Ardmore are that the smoke dominates. Oh, and the yeah. smoke is not dominating on this. But then again, we have found that as PD whiskey ages, smoke is one of the things that sort of dissipates over time. Yeah. Like the really old Lefroigs yeah. are really mild. It actually removes almost everything that I loved about Lefroig. I will tell you that we released uh, back at the beginning of the year, we had a 26 year old Lefroig that was simply, yeah. I mean, it was, mm. it, it, it tasted like a 15 year old. I mean, it was still very still peaty, peaty and punchy. Oh, oh yeah. Still nice. Oh, yeah. Me. When I saw a 26 year old, I had lower expectations on the Maybe peak. it was a it, more used cask. Yeah. I don't, um, so the grain was able to keep up with it. Might have been a second fill ex bourbon. Yeah. So this is, yeah. But if this is Ardmore, this is a more subtle Ardmore than I've ever had. Like, I got like, like a way elder, more nuance. Elderberry honey, which we have in our area. There's a local honey maker, and they have, they do different flavored released honeys, but elderberry mm. is one of them. Oh, this is um, tank. This is, I don't know, man. Do I need to undo my Ardmore go guess? Uh -uh. Th I okay. mean, this, uh, this is could... way more. You have no idea. This is way more tangy and almost sickly sour finish than I was expecting. That finish is really. You see what I mean? Like there's this uh, off sour note. Hmm. That's like grain, like a like a want a really. No, mm. I can't put my finger on it. There's a word I'm searching Ooh. for. No, I mean there's a little bit of a dankness, almost like a Campbelltown dank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm almost medicinal direction. Yeah. Uh-huh. But the Oloroso on that. I mean, there's the peat is in there for sure, but the Oloroso playing, they're playing along together here. Let me see. I'm gonna pull up what our eight what our years were. I'm gonna That's guess so mm -hmm. sweet. Yeah, there's nice uh, Oloroso influence on that. So this reminds me of uh, eating berries when you're supposed to be on the farm picking berries, you know, and you get like every once in a while you get one that's like way too sour when you're like grabbing handfuls of berries and mixes in with the nice ripe ones. And you're like, whoa, that's, zing that's zingy. Yeah. Uh-huh. So go back to the deep, rich, and dried fruits that, that we had though tonight. That twelve-year-old, it was it was oloroso, but it was drier, you know, spicy, oaky. This one yeah. is bringing out some of the, you know, probably a different oloroso cask here, but more sweetness with this one. I'm definitely getting, you know, more of those darker berries, um, you know, raspberries, blackberries. Yeah, I could see blackberry and raspberry. Yeah, specifically. I'm um, not a little water to see if I get wake up some of that buried smoke. Potentially. So this what was other Highland distilleries would be known for peat. Not a side no. project. So so not like Balvini peat or Palm right. Space Night, but like not Peat Week or yeah. or something like that. But like I can only think of Edredor's Balkan releases. Yeah, but I mean, that's ones. not even, I mean, that's not even as regular basis, you know, as what, you know, Ardmore does. No, yeah. and there's another one in my brain ev that has uh, Glenn, and they have Evolution, or Div or ev Glenn Glassaw. Ev Glenn Glassaw has a bunch of really smoky ones under the Evolution thing, and... Oh. Uh... Sorry, I was just looking. This was 21 years in ex bourbon hogshead and first and then two years in a first fill shaved, toasted, and recharred Oloroso. Uh, wait, wow. Yeah. So you would think that that would lower the peat impact. Um, well, yeah, but it's going to bring out so much more of that Oloroso cask. I mean, re retoasting, shaving, and retoasting that brings Oloroso it back. cask. Yeah, yeah, maybe it caramelizes it back to mm -hmm. the surface. I've mm -hmm. never done a retoast on right. a barrel. I recharred our barrel on one of our whiskeys 
So we ripped the head off a barrel and recharred it and then put bourbon back into it. Mm -hmm. And it doubled down on the char notes, mm -hmm. but it mm -hmm. didn't double down on the toast, yeah. toasted sugars notes. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Time for Shrimp said Ben Reek. Uh, but Ben Reek in my head is a sherry cask distillery. And that Ben Reek peated, which is amazing, by the way, yeah. is still an outlier. Yeah. So I'm trying to think of distilleries where <coughs> if you got their peated release, you would view it as core lineup. Uh, like real, what? like that's they're a peated distillery, sort of like you would in Isla. I mean, like, okay, so for example, Highland Park, even though it's mostly sherry tasting, to me is a peated distillery. Mm. Like everything they touch has some level of peat, right? Versus sherry, right? Whereas Ardmore leads with peat, like that. That's their first foot through the door, in my experience, is peaty. But there's got to be something else. These are really fun. Uh, that Good Ben Riach, though, Bart, I was going to say, Bart and I recently did, well, a while back we did the the Smoky 12, and then recent, more recently we did the, the I think it's Smoke Season, Ben Riach Smoke Season. Mm. Sm um, I think Smoke Season, Smoky Season, something like that. But, yeah, we were impressed with both of them. Yeah. No, I dig Ben Riach. They're uh, really underrated. There was a rep that, the, that I met that did Ben Riek, um and and the Glen Glasso mm. and one other brand and I can't remember he was the all three, right? Yeah, yeah. That was that one got a thumbs up from my uh, my house guest. <laughs> I just got very nice though. Uh, back to this one though. Still, almost up front is the that Oloroso sherry finish, the toasted note. Mm -hmm. Uh, the fruits, sweetness, and then in the background and through the finish comes the peat. Almost. Yeah, this one definitely leads with sherry mm -hmm. and finishes with, with a like a hint of ashy smoke. Yep, yep. Uh, nuttiness, not, not, nuttiness, some leathers and tobaccos in here though too from that Oloroso and the peat. Mm. Earthy, a little bit of that dank, that almost uh Campbelltown funk dang yeah. in there with it. Yeah, I really I mean I hate to say it, that one probably won the night for me. And it's we it's you know I, I always wanted to be the one of the younger ones and not the obvious like the old whiskey is my favorite. But that one has got levels of complexity that none of the other ones hit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm, we're still unpacking this one. Oh yeah, yep. And I'm not done. I mean, I added a little water, and it did not get any softer. It just got more. It just opened things up. Yeah. Uh, if you can see the comment, JT is asking: Are Oloroso casks in the same family as PX casks? One sweeter than the other. P yeah. PX is way sweeter because yeah. PX cherry is way sweeter. Yeah. Uh, both in that set, like he says, they are in that same family. They're both fortified wines. Uh, yeah, you've got what Oloroso, Pedro Jimenez. Yeah, and look at and Eric is explaining the difference even in grapes. Uh, I was talking about the impact of it on scotch. Uh -huh. Yeah. So when you get your PX cask scotches, they tend to have, in my experience, more of like plum and and dark, really dark fruit jam notes. Whereas to me, the Oloroso impact on whiskey is the almonds and toasted candied almonds and the, the lighter fruity kind of notes, fig instead of yeah. plum and, you know, yeah. things like that. And PX can be a little syrupy, almost like brown sugar or molasses syrup kind mm -hmm. of too in there with some of those other sweeter um, fruits and stuff like that. But yeah, Oloroso to me is drier. It's nuttier, maybe a little spicier PX yeah. and a be you know, like you said, sweeter, fruit a little bit more of the fruit showing and um more kind of like molasses brown sugar yeah but can be i mean it can be dark i've had a couple of px's um just phenomenal releases that are way different than any other you know px releases so i'll I mean, tell you the one i mean you could say uh portwood finish the mm -hmm. glendronic portwood oh that was a phenomenal bottle. Right? Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I need to find more of that one. <clears throat> All right. So 
That was oh, our five bottles. Wait, wait, let's read the tasting notes. Okay, you got it. Take it with that Texas. Give me the. Uh, oh wait. yeah, we'll go full. Uh, give me a give me a T one hundred and one Arnold. Oh, accent. <laughs> I think he just talks like a human because he. Oh, the T one hundred and one. I'm 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 be back. I'll, <laughs> I'll smoke a sweet and I can't do it. A savory <laughs> sensation. <laughs> <laughs> Rosemary and lamb fat roasted potatoes. <laughs> I can see that. Smoked cod liver. Like, honestly, who eats cod liver? Like, what what human is eating cod liver in order to write <laughs> tasting notes? This person who wrote this was punished as a child for cursing and forced to drink cod liver oil. <laughs> <laughs> Smoked cod liver drizzled with lemon juice and olive oil on toast followed... Roasted almonds. That's right. They went all savory all the way. And I would argue that this was way more roasted almonds and sweetness leading, followed by savory. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's get in here. Let me... Screen share coming in with... Oh, Eric is trying to explain how he has, knows a lot about wine. But he, he's only just started to learn uh, about Boone's Farm. <laughs> so he I... doesn't... But that's okay. You got to start somewhere. <laughs> what is this? It... Is this your... Oh, this is the whole rollout. Yep, this is the, the 12 cast that will be released tomorrow. Uh, so take your screen share, screen grabs there, everybody that's watching. Green one in there, huh? Which one? The G10. Oh yeah, uh huh. And that one was uh, they had on hand. At, they had nine nine of these whiskeys at the in person events, and I and from what I heard, that one's doing really well. People are really liking that one. Damn you! Did you pick from this list to choose tonight's? Yes. Then uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Because you chose really well yeah. and really hooked me up. Thank you. <laughs> well, you know, it is Christmas. Yeah, you know, it is now. <laughs> That's really <All> funny. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been some of my personal favorites in there as well. That's okay. I'm okay with that. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks to everybody that tuned in. Daniel, thank you for joining me. Yeah. I know you're you're a busy, busy man, and I'm glad when I uh, when I ask and and you're available and you're more than willing to to help out. Yeah. Thank you for having me. It's always a joy, and getting to drink good whiskey and trying to keep up with your tasting notes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, usually, I'm trying to keep up with yours. No, I'm just drafting. I'm just drafting off of your tasting notes. <laughs> Daniel did an Instagram post today too that called me. He said he was uh, going to be on a live with this extremely handsome man with my. Yeah, picture. that's right. One, you could have chose a better picture, but two, also <laughs> the comment I said a host is only as good looking as his guest is. So <laughs> I thought you would find it amusing that I just stole a screenshot for that post. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Reach out and say, "Hey, you got something that makes you look good?" Nope. Oh, no, <laughs> not doing it. <laughs> All right, anybody watching that doesn't know, check out Daniel Whittington with uh, the Whiskey Tribe and the Whiskey Vault on YouTube. They're down in Austin. Uh, whiskey, or their YouTube channel led to a great Patreon following that led to a distillery that led to uh, all kinds of stuff opening up. Daniel's a busy man. They're doing really good. Uh, appreciate your time and thank you for joining me. Thank you, sir. Always a and pleasure. As we say on the back of every bottle, remember, Scotch Malt Whiskey Society whiskeys are not for swigging, glugging, or knocking back. Please drink responsibly. Cheers. Cheers. Mm.